Hello everybody, welcome to Zoologist Network. I'm going to ask you a really quick question before we get started on our episode. And that is, do you know anybody that knows anybody that knows anybody with this in their home? Yes, the answer is yes, you do. Nobody knows anybody that knows anybody with this in their home. Imagine it bigger. It's open to the public. Yes, I know what you're thinking. It's a zoo. But we already talked about zoos. Now, we're going to talk about aquariums, which are water zoos, and the history of them. Let's get started. We're going to have to backtrack a little bit. Let's backtrack to the last two episodes, namely the one where I, the first part of the history of Zeus. Take a look. They're not being abused. Everybody has learned their lesson. Well, not everybody. I mean, you have Michael Jackson and who else? Uh, the Barnum and Bailey Brothers, all those other circuses. Yeah, not everybody. A few people haven't learned the lesson. Point is, it's the first scientific zoo. It teaches people about animals. The history doesn't end there. The London Zoo would actually open its first aquarium. Keeping water animals in captivity. Our next part of today's episode brings us to New York. Where Barnum, that you well know very well for his circuses, made his own aquarium as part of his museum. Where he housed white whales also known as beluga whales. These guys weren't kept right. Let's just say that. And this is what caused the controversy between all cetaceans in captivity. Cetaceans are dolphins and whales. And we're going to talk about, but we'll talk about that next episode. We talked about it in episode 3. We're going to talk about it again next episode when we talk about SeaWorld and Bush Gardens. It wasn't long until it became a trend. Some aquariums were even put in zoos. Just like the London Aquarium. And the Shedd Aquarium was the largest of them all. Until the Georgia Aquarium came in. In 2005. A lot of them moved to the coast for easier water supply, like the Long Beach Aquarium that I've been to. Yeah, you've seen you've seen a lot of you've seen a lot of me you see you see me in a lot of aquariums. You may remember this scene from Finding Dory. Yeah, that's right. She's in the aquarium. The Marine Life Institute, to be exact. Yeah. Although it's not real, it was based off of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Which gave folks the illusion that they were underwater too. Let's roll a clip of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. These are some animals you will find in the Monterey Bay Aquarium in Monterey, California. Just north of San Francisco. Interesting fact. The aquarium pumps fresh seawater from the actual sea for the animals. Interesting, right? This also... And, and what happens next starts a new whole new trend of people feeling like they're underwater.
if you've been paying attention like you should be, whenever we go on an aquarium, we usually see something like that. An underwater tunnel. A lot of aquariums have this where, you know, you see shark. One minute you have a shark swimming above your head. You got, what else? They do this with a lot of animals. Mainly sharks. But this started in New Zealand. When the New Zealand Aquarium opened. Since those days, aquariums have been going strong, just like zoos have. But you can think about it like a zoo for an aquarium for water animals. Yeah, we'll say that. To simple it down, to dumb it down for people, aquariums, just like zoos, are a big part of conservation. And we'll be visiting them. For many years to come. I'm Zen Martin. Remember, passion is a gateway to success. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Bye bye.